said, will you move to Iceland? And he said, in my entire life, I had never heard an audible voice of God. And he said, I looked around, and he said, there was no one behind me. And I wasn't near him. And he said, will you come? And Andy describes this as the Moses experience. He says, Moses in chapter 4 of Exodus looks to God and says, Hello, wrong person. You got mixed up. He went to the burning bush and he said, No, you're it. And Andy was like this, I'm not the preacher. Remember, I'm a chief financial officer. I work in Fort Worth. I don't speak in front of people. God said, you're the one. And he said, he remembers the Lord saying, what's in your hand? As Moses said, what's your staff? And he goes, oh, I got this Jesus smell. He said, if you are willing to put those in the homes of the Icelanders, I will multiply that. And as Andy walked around the street, a man, an older gentleman, comes running towards him, and they said this. He said, stop. Actually, he said, hi, stop. But when he was yelling, my husband looked, and he comes up, and Andy didn't know what he said. He says, I didn't get one of those videos about Jesus. You see, Linden, the, the ministry that my parents started 17 years ago, is the only form of media ministry in the nation of Iceland. They're the only ones translating any videos into the Icelandic language. They're a radio station that reaches 95% of the nation when only 3% of the nation goes to church. They're turning it on in these small villages. And God is changing hearts. You see, we have a story of a few, a few weeks ago, a lady called and she said, Sheila? She said, yes. She said, I want you to know for the last two years, Linden Radio has been my church. You see, we have gorgeous cathedrals in Iceland. But the priests for that particular community had been drunk for three weeks in her town. And she said, no one attends the church. She says, they have no form of believers in that town. So she turns it on from the main city and she worships with the people there. God had an intervention. You see, it didn't start 21 years ago. It started with a lady named Gudrun Tavistok. Gudrun Dauerstatter was always told to me as a woman that was pretty evil. She didn't raise her children, she jerked them up. She was always told to me as an alcoholic. She was never told as a nice lady. And Gudrun Dauerstatter was my grandmother. I always had one envy of the peaks. The pig children had Christian grandparents. And his mom and dad became those in my life because I never had them. But God had an intervention because of that. You see, my parents could have never, ever opened up that radio station and gotten a media license if my father wouldn't have had Icelandic blood. And my father didn't know that being raised by an alcoholic was going to change his life. And he didn't know that it was going to be so important. But you know, it's funny because my husband tells the Moses story, but I tell the Esther story. I was reading in chapter 4 of Esther, and I thought it was interesting, chapter 4 of Exodus. My husband was listening in chapter 4 of Esther. I was listening. I don't know if that has anything significant, but it just always interests me. In chapter 4 of Esther, we know the story well. She says this. Mordecai sends her the information. She says, Esther, you have to do something now. And Esther's a good woman. He's sitting in sat clothes, mourning for what's going to happen to the Jewish nation. And Esther gets some clothes together. And she sends it to Mordecai. And she says, get dressed. She's going to take care of the problem herself. And I thought, isn't that like a woman? We're just going to take care of it. And when the Lord called us, called me, I was like, Lord, I have done that. I know what Iceland is like. It's cold. If you're wondering, it's cold. 
and Texas is not. And I was like, God, I've already got the, I've already got the Girl Scout badge. I've been there, done that. Thank you. And if you read on in that chapter four, Mordecai calls back and says, Esther, if you do not go, God will send someone, but you and your family shall perish. And those very words spoke in my spirit, and as if the Lord had told me, it is time. It is time for you to leave your family. It is time for you to leave your home. It is time for you to quit your job. It is time for you to give up what the Lord has asked you to do and to go. I remember sitting with the missions board and they looked at our information. And the old preacher looked at us and looked back. And, and our honest thing was we told the Lord, if you ever, if you ever stop this, we're okay, God. We'll keep your Lord. And uh, we told the missions board, if you don't want to approve us, it's okay. You know, we feel like this is what the Lord wants us to do. But if you know, it's okay. I was like, we told the missions board that they looked over and looked what we did, looked over and looked what we did. And they kept looking at it. They said, boys, they're either called or crazy. Either way, we send them. He said, because we don't have anyone that has come through as missionaries to Iceland. Because there's one missionary in Iceland, and it's Michael Sheila Fitzgerald. And God has said that it's time for us to go and help carry the mantle. Never was that in our 10 year plan, but God had an intervention. You know, my husband is a chief financial officer, and if you know anything about chief financial officers, they know every dot and tittle of where the finances go. And I knew at the very moment that my husband said, it's time to go. And then he found out the salary of a mission, Mary. And he still said, it's time to go. I knew God had called us. My father looked at us across the table and said, we have never asked you to come. Please make sure that you have a calling and not a burden. And we thought about that long and hard, and we said, Lord, what's the difference? Because I get burdens all the time. You see someone die, and you see people on your bulletin, and you see Joplin, Missouri, and you feel bad, and you, you want to do something, and you send some money to the Red Cross and, and you feel burdened. But God showed us the difference between a calling and a burden is sleep. That's just the truth. It's sleep. When you can't sleep at night until you do something, it's a calling. And for a year, God has birthed in my stomach and birthed in my husband's stomach that it is time that we go and reach greater than 3% of a nation. It's time that we go and see grandparents that go through the Father's book that are filled beautiful cathedrals like yourself. We need your prayer. The story that really gripped my heart was this. I'm going to close with this. I want to make sure that you go. Okay. Alexander the Great, 33 years old, pretty much had the entire world in his hand. He was dying at 33. He had pretty much accomplished the entire part of the modern world at this time. And he brought everybody in and he said, I want three things. Three things. And they said, what, Alexander? You can have anything. You're dying. What do you want? He says, number one, I want only physicians to carry my body to the grave. He said, number two, I want every gold and silver piece Lining the streets of two of my tomb. I want you to melt it down. And number three, I want my hands to be outside the coffin dangling. And they said, Alexander, this makes no sense. 
dangling out of the coffin because I want everyone to know this. I came in this world with nothing and I leave this world with nothing. And those words have gripped my heart because I said, Lord, what if it is us? because one thing we know 